Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 85. This episode is a man of many voices, a man who's read more books than probably everyone you know combined, Jonathan Davis. I, uh, I like to think that, like, Jonathan Davis, Mark Thompson, January Lavoy, uh, you know, all those, all those amazing, amazing voiceover artists that do the audiobooks, they're like the audio Avengers, you know? Uh, so I don't know who Jonathan would be, um, but he's great. He's so awesome. So much fun to talk to. Uh, we talked about how he uh, he actually knows where I live. I mean, not where I live, but like, you know, he knows Naples, which is always fun. Um, we talk about Randall Dukim, actually, and we get into uh, him living in Puerto Rico, different accents that he can do. He's done some amazing stuff in voiceover, not just audiobooks, just amazing stuff in general, and he's got some great stories about that. We also talk about uh, Max Payne. He worked on Max Payne and uh, talks about doing motion capture for Max Payne 3 and some really funny stories with that. Uh, And then, guys, he's read, like, a thousand audiobooks. And I'm not exaggerating. Like, there's a number, and it's a thousand. That's insane. Uh, We talk about how he got into audiobooks and the different techniques for different voiceover things that he's done. Um, Totally forgot to mention, he won an Audi Award. Uh, so congrats, John, if you're listening to this, uh, for real, um, we get into the different audiobooks, his favorites, uh, regimens, things like that, that he used to do, but now he's got it on lock. Um, he's just fun. He was super cool. He's got great advice, uh, for people who want to get into voiceover and stuff. Uh, we talk about Master and Apprentice, cause you guys know I'm a Qui-Gon fan and Jonathan Davis does Qui-Gon's voice, uh, in Dooku Lost. So all kinds of great stuff. Great, great dude. Super talented. Really fun to chat with. So without further ado, here is The Interesting Podcast, episode number 85 with Jonathan Davis. Theme song time. I'm in Florida. Where are you? Oh, well, I'm in Jersey. Oh, really? What part? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm kind of I'm kind of located uh, closer to Pennsylvania. I'm kind of right in the center. Gotcha. But a gotcha. little closer to Philadelphia than to New York. But I but I go to New York, you know, almost all the time. If sure. I'm not working from home. That makes um, sense. And where are you in Florida? Uh, Naples. Oh, which... okay, great. Yeah, I I I went to I went to high school and to college in Miami. Oh, dude, that's right yeah, over there. Yeah. So you, yeah, know, so you I, know where I, I it know. is. <laughs> yeah, I know Florida quite well. Although, yeah, I, I spent most of my time on the Atlantic coast. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm in Miami yeah. all the time for work, so hey, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, we did, wow. We both travel for work stuff. <laughs> hey, hey. But fun stuff, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Right on. I was just in Jersey, actually, in the oh. end of March. I flew into Newark, and I stayed mm-hmm. in uh, Parsippany. To okay. see a play in Hackettstown because I don't like convenience. <laughs> Two, a three play in Hackettstown. Yeah, yeah. There's a That's... there's a buddy of mine who uh he actually previous guest on the show. Uh, his name's okay. Randall Duck Kim. He was sure, um, sure. Yeah, I know yeah. Randall Duck Kim. Yeah, Randall's yeah. awesome. And he so he was on the show a while ago, and we hit it off so well that he invited me up to a play. And I was like, At, well, in Hackettstown, I'm just surprised it was in Hackettstown. That's yeah, all. him him and his wife run uh, like a theater company there. So really? They, that, yeah. That's where they live? They live in they, Hackettstown? They live in Morristown. In Morristown, sure. Which is like the same thing. <laughs> but like, but more, Morristown is a really nice town. Yes. Yeah. yeah Hackettstown yeah. is a tiny little exact, one street yeah. thing. We, yeah. had, we had to kill time, my <laughs> wife and I. And we're like, um, <laughs> let's walk down this road, I guess. He's a fine actor. Oh he's my! Been, I mean, God, oh, he has such dude. a reputation just as a theater actor before he, you know, went into film. He, uh, yeah. Wow. So they did a they did a uh, an Ibsen play, Enemy of the People. Mm-hmm. Sure. And it was without a doubt the craziest, most like amazing play I've ever seen. 
And to see someone well, like Randall, you know, who's been a professional theater actor for like 50 years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I was telling someone the other day that like I've been to a lot of plays. And when you're when you're sitting in a play, there's like a cognitive dissonance where you're like, I'm in a play. I'm watching people on stage. They're doing a thing. I'm sitting in a thing. And you're invested, but you still are kind of like spatial awareness, you know? Uh, yeah. At least in my experience. But this time... I don't know if it was the play, if it was Randall, if it was the combination, but my wife and I were so invested that we're like, what is going to happen to this guy? And it was like watching <laughs> real life happen. I love that. I love that. It was I love crazy. when that happens. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, man. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah, I love when that when that I, I that's happened to me not not as often but but definitely a few times. I remember one specific experience where you know, it was it was just Shakespeare, it was some it was a classic play. Yeah. And I know what happens to the characters, but the interpretation was so wild that I actually went, oh, my God, is he going to kill <laughs> him? What, what's going to happen? What, I, I was really in suspense. I bet. You know, kind of like what you're, what you're describing. In yeah. A way. Isn't that yeah. nuts that, like, that can happen? Yeah, that, that's pretty fan. That's kind of that's a great experience. Yeah, that's that... when you know theater's really working. That's right. Know? Now we have to chase that high. That yeah. we're, we're in now. <laughs> We're just going to go to all the plays now just in case. We're going to find that is experience. It, is, do you do that often? Do you go? Uh, uh, do you not s- a whole lot, actually, because the, the fun thing about Naples is it's the home of the newlywed and the nearly dead. Uh, so, <laughs> so there's not there's not a whole lot going on here. Um, is is Jungle Larry still there? Yes, it is. It is. Wow. that's <laughs> I cannot believe you just made a Naples reference. That's home a of the Tiglon. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a couple things to do here. Or the liger. I don't you know, know what it was. It was something like that. It's some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's cool is so I I have this new thing now where so Bonita Springs, you know, like mm-hmm. twenty minutes north of Naples, there's a place called Wonder Gardens, and it's become oh, like I don't know that dude. If you ever come back down, you let me know. It's this, okay. <laughs> it's it's my new tell when anyone's like, hey, I'm coming down. Like, cool, we're going to Wonder Gardens. It's like this mini zoo where you go in and you get this you you pay for this like bags of food and then they have like alligators flamingos peacocks all this stuff and you just feed them oh i like that so cool and the flamingos aren't in a cage they're just walking around so you're like what you can like hand feed flamingos it's nuts yeah yeah it's really cool so i take people there now like hey the other place it's, it's a little north of where you are but um Crystal River, have you ever been there? Yeah, dude. For the, the manatees. Yep. Or mm-hmm. yeah, that I love. That's that's something. Uh, you know, in that region that I that I that's special that I that I that I've done that I that I always recommend to people. Agreed. Agreed. You know? We got some. Yeah. We got some fun things done here. We got alligators everywhere. Of course. So that's of cool. Course. You know. Of course. It's, it's funny talking to someone who's like never been to Florida, and they're like, "Are there really alligators?" You're like, "Yeah, but they're not." Are a big you deal. kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> And that people are afraid to, of them. When I went to class at U of M, I went to University of Miami, and I used to just walking to class. There were gators. Yeah, they're just on you the know, side just sunning of the road. themselves. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. they didn't bother. They don't bother you. No, I yeah. I have this thing where like I'm terrified of snakes, so I just like <laughs> I I convince myself it's okay because I'm like Indiana Jones is afraid of snakes. So hey, you know, it's of not course, that there you go. But I've yeah. never been afraid of alligators because you can hold their mouth shut with your hands. In theory. <laughs> well, <laughs> in theory. Well. <laughs> I mean, if you get them on the wrong day and you happen to have a roll of electrical tape, you've got the upper hand. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, granted, if they get a hold of you, it's going to No, over. yeah. I wouldn't want to be near a bull alligator. No, you know, especially during right? mating season. Yeah. Gee, yeah. I saw one run on the water once. It was one run? Of the, yeah, dude. It was one of the craziest <laughs> things I've ever seen in my life. It was like this thing where... It was a uh, halfway along Alligator Alley. They had this like stop where you can go and you mm-hmm. know look at the gators do their thing. Sure. And we go down this boardwalk, and there's this crane there, and it's eating a baby alligator, trying to choke it down, like that cartoon uh-huh. of the frog, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we're like, "What is happening?" And it's just choking it down for like a a good thirty forty five seconds, and then we just hear this kind of croaking from the corner, and the mother comes around and runs on the water for a couple feet at the crane, and it got away. 
it, oh, it did get away. It got away. It got away. Boy, but she oh, was she was ticked off enough yeah. to actually do that. It was nuts. I was like, I've never seen one move that fast before. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. So wait, are you <laughs> are you from Florida or you just went to school there? Uh well, I, I'm I'm essentially a, I'm a I was born in New York. Okay. And my family are mainly New Yorkers, but I was raised in the Caribbean. Oh, I moved to what? the Caribbean when I was very young. Really? Yeah, yeah. I grew up in the Caribbean. I, then I moved to Florida when I was about 15. Gotcha. And so that's, that's a good age. And, yeah. And so I did high school and college. And then after that, I went to Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta for, for about a decade. Nice. And and then went back to New York. So then, then I've been in the tri-state area since. Sure. Yeah. So oh, What part of the Caribbean? And, uh, Puerto Rico mainly. Oh, yeah. dude, I love Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah I've so been I, a couple I'm times. Fl- I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm fluent in Spanish, and I, my parents are. I mean, I, I'm not. We're not Latino, but sure. I, I identify myself with, with Puerto Rico because that's where I was raised. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. I did I... an audio book um, for Ricky Martin. What he he was well, it was his autobiography. Sweet. And he couldn't do it. For some reason, he his schedule was off, so they hired me because the producers knew my background. Mm-hmm. But when they heard my name, when when Ricky heard about my name, he was like Jonathan Davis. That doesn't sound, you know. <laughs> are you sure? You know. Sure. So they wanted to vet me, so they put me on the phone with him, and within two minutes, you know, I was talking. We were just chatting, and he was like, "Oh, okay, dude. Yeah, you know, you know Puerto Rico. You know, he. It was just like what we were doing. I just, I just talked." told them what schools I went to and we spoke in Spanish with each other and we're both you know I mean I have a Puerto Rican dialect when I speak Spanish Dude. And we, we, yeah that was it <laughs> did you have to do a Ricky Martin impression no I didn't do it for him <laughs> no but it's funny because I did a Carlos Santana it was the same thing Carlos oh, Santana sweet. I did an audiobook and he couldn't he couldn't complete it so he did the he kind of did bookends and I did the 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 kind of the substantial portion of it yeah in that in that case i did listen to him you know we spoke and i listened to him and then i was able to kind of you know i didn't go over the top but i tried to be as close to his his tone as i could sure you know that's yeah. pretty cool yeah not, i feel like you don't get a lot of people with those kind of stories you're like <laughs> I had to audition for ricky martin over the phone he's like oh yeah no, no. You're, you're puerto rican enough and you're like no, oh, exactly. cool <laughs> you had to prove your puerto ricanness that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, well, I have tons of stories, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. dude, that's so cool. Yeah. Here's my. I'll tell you my favorite. Let, let, let me hear quick. it. Unless Let's you want it. to have this on air, I don't know. Oh, dude, this is all. <laughs> or are we on air already? I, don't I know mean, what we're doing. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the show. It's just chatting about whatever. I like to oh, get cool. to know people. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, sh- I just. Uh, show I. Because uh, so, you know, I do. I do. I've been in voice. I, how I started out, I was an actor, and I was doing theater and and film and things and then i kind of segued into voiceover yeah because it really is a a part of the medium or a part of of acting that you know can really it's just a it it helps pay the bills and it can become a lucrative profession and when i was i was a voiceover actor in atlanta and i moved to new york and i started doing vo and I, I did all, you know, the VO has so many different facets. There's commercials, there's promos, there's animation, there's right. industrial work, and then there's audiobooks. And audiobooks was a very, it was very new at the time. Sure. Or something that was very, it was such a niche that it wasn't popular at all. This is back when it was cassettes and they used to abridge everything. Right, a lot of the Star right. Wars were abridged and they really kind of, I know a lot of the fans hate it. <laughs> you know, really don't like the Where's the rest versions. of it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But back then it was popular, you know, to have the abridged versions. Sure. Um, so that's kind of how I started. Then through, I got, I started doing audio books and I auditioned and then I just got hooked on it and I started getting hired. And then my first big project was, uh, Snow Crash. Do you know that's that Snow book at all? Crash. That's, um... Oh, what's his name? The the author, Neil uh, Stevenson. Neil Stevenson. Yeah, that book's huge. It's if yeah, it's and it's a great audio book too. Kevin Thompson, who produces all the Star Wars productions, yeah. you should speak to him sometime too if you, if you can. Dude, yes. He um he uh, produced Snow Crash, and that's actually so. What we did with that and a few other projects too is that he has a binaural mic 
Oh. Which, have you seen these? No. They, it looks like a, it's a microphone and it looks like a human head. Oh, sweet. <laughs> and what you do is at any, anywhere that you, you know, that you are speaking into it, if you speak from whatever angle of the head, the sound when you're listening to it sounds like it's coming from that direction. Oh, so it's, that's it's cool. really cool. It's a really cool, um, it, it's great for doing effects. And sometimes he uses that when we do Star Wars, but mostly, I think a couple of times he's done it. Um, but, but Snow Crash was done using that microphone. And from there, he called me into audition for Star Wars. Nice. Uh, and then I got, I started doing it. And then, um, and then he, then he got, mark thompson and then after mark he started getting a few a few other people and now it's a pretty it's a it's a great group of folk that kind of are involved with it um january yeah. lavoy and uh, mm -hmm. daniel davis and now there's saskia marvel marleveld and a, a, a bunch of other people sean cannon that he just keeps on bringing people in that are really good and that are really great for certain projects so what we do usually is that it, it was different different in the beginning, and it, and it keeps on merging in, in terms of what he chooses for the productions. But we kind of he kind of fits the, the the style of the story and the characters that may suit them to the to to the narrator. That's cool. Mark Mark is wonderful, like doing Luke, and he's he's he does a great impression of Han, and he yeah. loves that character. So he's so good at so, and he he tended I tended to at some point. I would get a lot of the Sith stories yep, or the darker stories like the Dark Bane trilogy, which is yep. one of my favorites. Oh, um, I'm familiar with your work. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, so I it's funny talk, those, you know. It's, it's funny or, talking or, to you in my ear now because I've listened to so many of your, your audiobooks that I'm like, you're not saying book words right now. <laughs> So it, it's great, and it's great. Or just you know, then and then there are other characters. Somebody who's doing the Leia, or if they choose stories for Ray. Yeah. Or, um, uh, what was um, oh, uh, Jean Urso. Yep. Uh, you know, wh whoever it may be, you know, they try. He tries to to find somebody that's suitable for for those roles. So they just did Dooku, so they brought you and Morton to do that, yep. and he did Tarkin also. Um, and. He's a. He did a. I think there was yeah the the audiobook Tarkin and he also did that. And then when they did Plagueis, they brought Daniel Davis in. So he, it's he's just really great at casting the right folk for the for the right projects. Sure, sure. Yeah. Your first audiobook was Snow Crash. That was my very well. It, not, that was my first kind of popular book. Mm -hmm. um, my very first book. <laughs> <laughs> I've told people. So my very first book, I actually lost the job. I, it was Grisham. It was John, a John Grisham oh. book, and, and he had to approve it. Oh, so no. So it was a big book. It was my very first project, and I wasn't used to doing audiobooks because audiobooks versus other voiceover work. Oh, that's you know, a different other voice, If you do documentaries, that's like an hour of work. If you oh. do animation, <laughs> you're talking about an hour you know, sure. commercials, ob ob obviously, it, you can be in the studio for 10 minutes doing a commercial and then go home. Yeah. Know? But an audiobook, you know, you're there nine to five and it can be a week to more. Yeah. So I wasn't prepared for that. And, and a big <laughs> mistake I did was I, uh, for the for, for the main character. Oh, no. Usually when, you do, when you're doing audiobooks, I'm, I'm not talking about Star Wars per se, but just a, sure. when you're doing specific audiobooks, you should do – if whoever the lead is, don't go crazy in doing a character voice because you're going to be in there for hours. Oh. So if you're doing that something that really strains your voice – yeah. If you're doing something, right? You know, and if that's what you're – you know, or if you're doing like – you know, so in this one it was – he was supposed to be like a nonagenarian and I was doing some really extreme kind of, you know, <laughs> For the voice – <laughs> and I lost my voice within two days. Oh, I, no. I, I, I lost my voice and they had to replace me. And it was terrible. I felt terrible. But that was a big that was a big lesson. You know, they say if you if you're going into voice if you're going to audiobooks, if you're voiceover and you want to do audiobooks, what they you know, a, a big lesson, first thing is that whoever your your main character is, whoever has the most if it's first person. Sure. You you don't want to take pick something extreme because it's going to really wreak havoc on you. You want to kick, pick something pretty neutral. Man, that makes know? a lot of sense. I never would have thought yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Neither did you at the beginning, I guess. <laughs> 
And then this is this the story I was going to tell you originally. This is the, the best story about with dealing with audiobooks. And, it's, and everybody has their stories, too. Of course, of course. Um, but I get an, a call from my agent, and uh, I got on the phone, and she goes, you're not going to believe this, but Francis Ford Coppola wants to meet with you. What? And I, 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 I just, yeah, exactly. That's, that was my response. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And she goes, I said, what is this about? What, uh, what is this? And he says, well, it has to do with your, with your voiceover work, with your narration. And I, I was shocked. And somebody had recommended him to me. Uh, a producer had heard my work on audiobooks and or on Audible, wow. and uh, in, invited me to 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 come see him, you know, to, to meet him and audition for him. And I did. And then I, I got hired. And Woo. we did a special project. It was a, a kind of he was testing out uh, something that he was working on. And he hired all these actors to do like a, a read through, but he wanted somebody to to also narrate because there was a lot of of expositional stuff that wasn't dialogue, and he wanted somebody to cover that. Oh. And so I was the person, like if there was an action scene or if there was something environmental, mm -hmm. he wanted somebody that can bring that to life, and he wanted to hear what it sounded like because he was he was working on it and all the other actors was i was sitting next to edie falco and oscar isaac this what? is right before right before force awakens dude i remember like days later i saw the big photograph when they had their big read through <laughs> you're like force wait awakens. a second and i just worked with him yeah <laughs> it was a great it was a great group of people dude um, yeah jennifer ely and this is like right when she was yeah. she was supposed to be in game of thrones if you know the story right right she was supposed to be catelyn stark and so she was, you know, this is right around that time period. And actually, the the day after we did it, uh, Gandolfini passed away. Oh, so I had man. just worked with Edie Falco. So it, it was so strange, you know, just to see all the, 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 the arcs of all these folk of what they were going through, you know, right after that. Yeah. You know, You're at that, that nexus that, point that in time. Reading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> man. Anyway, so that was that. <laughs> Coppola, that's pretty big. Man. That was that was fun. That was that was that was great. And just, yeah. I mean, if they need a narrator, fair, fair enough. Jonathan Davis is the dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. I mean, you've got a bit of experience in it. You had like you're over 450 books. I don't even think I've read more now. 450. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. What's your number now? According to Audible. Oh, of know. course. Yeah, of course. according to them. <laughs> what do, what do they know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man, so. When you when you're going to do this like audiobook specifically, let's dive yeah. in, Jonathan. We're going. Sure. <laughs> when you're doing audiobooks, like get my goggles on. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Seatbelts. <laughs> All right. Read the pamphlet first. Uh, <laughs> do you do you get to read the books before you record with them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, can, I try to. Pro probably I best. Try, yeah. That, I bet that saves a lot of time. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't want to be in a circumstance where. You know, suddenly you find out on page, you know, 350 what the character, you know, you know, this happened to me. This actually with Snow Crash, it happened to me. I, uh, I, <laughs> I oh, didn't no. complete reading the book. And uh, I decided with I had a director, but I decided I was going to make one character kind of like a Rasta. Uh -oh. He was like I had a, he was like a Rasta <laughs> vibe. That's really out there choice you know sure but he said he seemed that way to me he seemed very west indian and you know so i, I went with that and then like <laughs> much later in the book we found out that he's an inuit oh no <laughs> yeah i know so <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but this is like revealed like really late in the book Oh, so no. I had we had to go back and <laughs> redo. Luckily, you know, he he didn't say much. He was one of those. He was like the hound. You know, sure. He was like a character like that. So he, he was very tacit and, you know, very laconic. You know, he just kind of said very little. So That's but, you know, so we had funny. to go back and redo everything. It's, so, so I, yes, it's it's good to read the book. I hope there's a recording of you being like, and then. Oh, <laughs> 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 just, just realizing it. <laughs> Oh yeah. man! So when you're doing, because you do a ton of voices in in your books. They said I've listened to quite a few of them. <laughs> right. Do you get to have a lot of input when you're making up these voices that aren't like established? Obviously, that aren't established characters. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's or sometimes, cool. you know, sometimes it's the director. It's you know, and Kevin is the director, Kevin yeah. Thompson. So he he may say, you know, one time I remember 
or I think it, like an executive producer. This is early on in one of the uh, Jedi Academy or Jedi Quest stories. Yeah. Somebody there, he wanted a character to be Australian. I, th- I was like, what? I don't, I, don't under- I don't know why, but, you know, <laughs> you, you go with it. Or, or some t- I remember one, I think Tatooine Ghost, there was a character where they really wanted him, the, the director wanted him to sound like Harvey Firestein. Oh, sweet. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so <not>? people <laughs> have input, you know, they, they get, but yeah, for the most part, we just make our choices, and then the, um, you know, Kevin or, or whoever else is there, the executive producer, will say, oh, "Well, let's not do it that way, or let's try something different." Sure, yeah, maybe not a Rasta guy this time. No, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think that's the last time I've tried. <laughs> I've tried that. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you have a favorite voice you like to do, like accents and stuff? Because everyone's like, "Hold on, I got a really Star- good Star Wars," or just uh, just in general. Uh, no, 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 not necessarily. I just do whatever, you know, I try to f- cast it in my head. You know, I, I, I look th- I look at it filmically. So sure. I really look at the text and I try to, you know, I, I try not to be too extreme. I try to just, you know, I, I look at it and I, I say, well, who if this was a film, who could I see in this role? You know, oh, and I don't, I don't I also I'm not one. Um, you know, I don't know how the, I, I try not, I, I try, I kind of try more to be a bit more subtle in my interpretations. I try not to be too, too extreme, but I do listen to people, you know, I'll listen to snippets of things and I'll try to get a sense of how they speak. Sure. sure. And, uh, and of their cadences or something. And, and then I'll do that. Um, so, so not particularly, although, you know, sometimes there was a book I did where it was great because the character was. Um, he was kind. He 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 was similar to Rain Man. You oh, know, cool. he, he was somewhat. He was on the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. And but it was a it was wonderful to do because you could the way that it was written. The script was written in a way where it really it really reflected his ticks and cadences. Oh, and cool. so that that was a blast to do. But it that wasn't really necessarily my choice. It was the way that the text was written. Sure. So that really helped a lot. Are they know. are they books? Do you have a book in front of you, or is it like a script when you're doing it? Uh, no, it's, 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 well, these days everything's electronic. Oh, that yeah. makes sense. So I have, Little I have a manuscript, thing. you know, but the very first time, this was kind of cool when I did, uh, uh, it was my very first Star Wars book, or I think it was, uh, I'm not sure if, I think, I thought, I think Attack of the Clones was the first one that I did. Ooh, good one. And it was so new because it was, the movie hadn't come out and it still had Ooh. like markings on it from like Lucas. What? You know, say, yeah, it had like, you, you know, like, you know, little notes in the margins, dude, you know, which was which was cool. That was really cool. I, n- I haven't seen that since, but that was that was early on because that's when we had scripts. Right. You know, right in front of you. You know, you had the text and it was it was a script. You had the manuscript, gotcha. you know, but these days everything's electronic. Gotcha. Do you miss the te- do you miss the tactile pages? Are you like, oh, that's probably, that's probably um, better. Uh, I, 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 no, I prefer electronic because just in terms of the, 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 uh, the sessions are smoother because there's no, oh, there's less noises. That makes you sense. You know, that's the thing is every time you, you shift a paper, you know, or maybe, you know, that, you know, you'll, they'll have to stop and go, oh, we heard that noise. Let's go back and start over. Oh yeah. You know, paper noise. So it, it, it can be, it just takes longer. That makes sense. When you're sense. doing it from a book, you're, you're turning pages or shifting around. So electronically is much smoother. Sure, makes sense. Because those, yeah. I'm sure those mics pick up literally everything. Because you're doing. Although on the other the hand, work. when I was at Celebration, uh, back in 2015, we were doing a performance of William Shakespeare's Star Wars. Have you heard those? The oh Indexer? yes, those are great. Yeah, they are. It's yeah, such he, a good idea. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, and and he actually they're doing some more by him. Random House uh, is doing more projects with him, not just Star oh, Wars, cool. but he just did a uh, Back to the Future. In oh, Burst. what? Yeah, in Shakespeare. Yeah, that's so yes. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then Mean Girls too. Oh, and I think perfect. they're both out on Audible. They're both released. Amazing. Um, but when we were doing that, we were performing, and it was so exciting because there must have been two thousand people in the hall, and it was packed. Wow. And we were, and everybody was there to see, you know, to to, to listen to, and we had a great group of people doing it live and uh but in the we had our ipads but G- my ipad went dead in the, oh, <laughs> in no. the middle of the performance <laughs> of course why not and it's like 
it was and and then same it's it happened the january also and we both at one point you know luckily somebody else had a script and they just it was so t- it was so seamless you know just somebody just went and just plopped it right in front of us pros but that's the that's the danger with using a tablet that's what i'm you saying know? you know yeah. technology man it's awesome yep. until it isn't <laughs> exactly yeah that's cool luckily man. in the studio it, it works fine yeah you know, yeah fair enough a controlled environment you know? Exact controlled environment, <laughs> right? Exactly. I remember a long time ago hearing about like a uh, like Dragon Ball Z, this anime series where they're just doing a ton mm-hmm. of screaming and stuff. Uh, one of the actors was like going Super Saiyan and passed out because he was just yelling all day for a thing. And you do yelling pretty well in your books, <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> You're pretty. I can tell a Jonathan Davis yell from across oh, the street. No. Yeah, I was like, wait a second. Hold on, I know who that well, is. <laughs> well, do the other does there? But does Mark yell? Does do they I yell mean, too? They do, <laughs> but not as good. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna say Mark's awesome. He's been on the show, but I know a of Mark course, yell versus a Jonathan Davis yell. That's Just, hysterical. It it also has to do with so like. My favorite audiobook I've ever listened to, and that, like not just Star Wars, but in all of them, and I've yeah. listened to a lot, uh, is Lords of the Sith. Ooh, really, boy, dude! Wow, you killed it. Killed oh, thank you, man. It. Yeah, it's it's so good. But I'm I'm wondering. So, like, you said with audiobooks, it's, it's like a process, nine to five type thing. But as far yeah. as like, because I know you've done like cartoons and stuff too. I have, I have, but I'm ba- since I'm based in New York, I don't do as many. Sure, you sure. Know, everything's out in Los Angeles. Yeah, but, yep, I, but yep. I have do cartoons. Yes, I have. Is yeah. there like a different like way that you approach something like voiceover for cartoons? And you do video games. I know, I know you're a Max. I Bain. do video games. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's very different. Um, video games specifically, uh, cartoons. It depends on who the producer is and who you're working with. Gotcha. Um, but it's a it's it's much more visceral, and when you talk about yelling, because in audiobooks you have to be very controlled, right? You know, I mean, they they, they you know, because you know you can't blow somebody's ear out. Yeah, yeah, preferably you know, not. At, suddenly, <laughs> out, you know, just in the you know, just out of nowhere. Yeah. So they, they they you know they they really you know we but in video games they want you to go all out. Yeah. Like if you're on fire, they want you to be on fire. Oh. You know, if you've been set on fire. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I want to feel it, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, it's crazy. Man. Um, a lot of screaming, and usually with those, and and usually in those in those video, I've done uh, some really cool ones. I did. Uh, I've been in some of the Max Payne. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. Uh, I've, I've trilogy familiar. two of those. <laughs> Uh, Rainbow Siege Six, I did that, and that was a lot of yelling, yeah. you know, because it's just. But what was so Siege cool is they they said something. in Rainbow Six Siege it was really neat. The director, really great guy, he um, uh, his name was Ed Lewis. Perfect. If you ever work, anybody ever works with him, but he would, you know, th- what they have is they have three different gradations for. So if it's just somebody going, uh, I'm hit. You know, sure. The, you know, they have different gradations. So it's just like, OK, this one is you're whispering it over the, the calm to your, you know, your colleague. That's oh. the first one. You know, just I'm hit right. you know, really low. The second one is he's right next to you. Uh-huh. Then the third gradation is you're screaming at somebody who's 50 feet away and you're screaming at the top of your lungs. You know? oh. So they would do like three different versions, you know. So they got options. So, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. That after after a day of doing video games or animation, it can be it can be tough. You'll be home with your throat coat tea. Yeah, I know, bet. Nursing yourself. Jeez. And like I know, old like older video games, it was all like voiceover stuff. But like new stuff, it's like mocap stuff. Have you done mocap stuff? That's what. Yeah, uh, Max Payne was mocap. Oh, and it was fa- what? It was fantastic. It was fa- if you well. One of them that I did, Max Payne three. If you if you play Max Payne three, yeah, yeah. the character I played, which is he was one of the main villains, and his his name was uh, Colonel Becker. Oh, and it was sweet. And if you look at that Colonel Becker, it's me. I mean that that's that's what so I look cool. Like. <laughs> what? I mean, well, that's what I looked like ten years ago. I'm yeah, a little grayer yeah. now. <laughs> You're right. I never put that together, <gasps> dude. Yeah, no, if you play it, it's, it's everybody, that's what they look like. And it was all, it was fascinating. I mean, when they, uh, 
you know, we had a, a whole photo session where they took photographs from every angle of our face. You know, we had to open our mouth and they like put the camera so they could see oh, sweet. our molars, you know, yeah. and, you know our uvula. Yeah, and, I mean, you're yelling. And, Need accuracy. And exactly. And then we and when we when we filmed it, it was filmed on a green screen in a studio in a in a film studio. Oh, that's so cool. And we had uh, it was it was like being on a film set. Yeah, you know, really, I bet. it was a film set pretty much. And we all had that, you know, it was right when Avatar came out, we all had that kind of year where Oh, there the was head a camera, thing. The head thing. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. The head camera where pretty much, you know, even if you were moving, your face was static. On film it was static. Right, because so it's moving it with you. it didn't matter what, you know, how you moved, it was static. And then they had cameramen surrounding you filming everything else. What? And I remember going back at in the beginning, because we, we went back to do reshoots after like a year. You oh. know, a year had gone by, and we went back to do reshoots for it. And at first, when I saw the playback, the dailies, we were just stick figures. Oh, but sweet. When we went, yeah, I mean, it was just stick figure. But then when we went back a year later... It was all the animation was complete. And I was like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because it was the back of my head. And I went, D dude, that's 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 my neck fat. <laughs> yeah. How'd they do that? How'd you... Wait a second. How'd they get that? <laughs> that was like that was like that's I, I mean, I knew it was me. I was like, I can't believe it. That's that's you know, that's the back of my earlobe. And that's my neck fat. And that's, you know, yeah, the strand yeah. of gray I've hair I had striped before. across my head. <laughs> <laughs> you have an existential yeah. crisis. You're like, that's a part it, of me I've was... never seen. Oh, it was crazy. And then to see me dying, you know, oh, of course, you know, that was... <laughs> oh, I gave it away. Did I well, give it away? Spoilers. Damn it. <laughs> if they haven't played by now, you know what? Come on. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a statute of limitations in games and it's like a year and a half, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> the rest is on you. <laughs> That's cool, though. Yeah. Motion capture sounds like it'd be the most fun. Like if you're on if you're on the right set doing the right kind of stuff, like. It'd be cool. It's just imagination, right? You said it's on a green screen. It's green screen, yeah, yeah. I remember one guy. He it was supposed to be a car chase, and he was sitting on a on like a cardboard box. Oh, that's so. You cool. know, and then the, then they make it. You know, same like me. I had I had a scene where it was uh, I'm fleeing in an airplane, and they actually had like a set of stairs, like you know, like a in an airport where you where you're climbing up the stairs to go into the. So they had what? that, and that's what we were on. Obviously, there was no jet you yeah. know, behind, but we're supposed to be running up that to flee into the airplane. You know, what? that's so you cool. Know? Yeah, it's like an adult. I almost playground. killed myself, and I ran up, and I was like supposed, to, and I had like a like a uh, uh, <laughs> a, a paper towel roll or something that <laughs> was supposed to be a bazooka. Oh, amazing! You know, and I'm supposed <laughs> to like you know die, die, Mister Payne, you, you know, and I'm shooting <laughs> at him or something, and then I almost I I. Luckily, the, one of the one of the grips grabbed me by the seat of my pants because I I almost walked right off it, and oh, that would have no. been like, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> he was like, I was hanging, you know, from the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, so, you committed. That's a we I'm need. I'm a small guy. I'm like a hobbit, so it wasn't that bad for him to pull me back up. I'm pretty close. I got these little meerkat hands. Like what? Is, what is oh. this? I have small hands. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's cool. So I think about it's kind of neat that things have progressed that way, and that like like I said, it's mo it's a lot of motion capture now. Like, dude, Red Dead Two that just came out last year was like yeah. five yeah. years it took to make that, and they were all like, "We're jumping on barrels in their horses now." I'm like, "That's awesome." See, I, I did I did the first one. That's so I, I was cool. part of that cast, but I we didn't do mocap or I didn't do mocap for my character. Oh, so for, they did everything. Dead yeah, yeah. It was just for for Max Payne two, sure. uh, three. Max Payne two, like the guy that I played in, I played Vlad in Max Payne two, who's yeah. the villain of that. He I'm looks nothing like me. I'm seeing a you type know, so. here. What? <laughs> I'm seeing a type yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yep. it's dark stuff. Yeah. So, um, but he, you know, like I look nothing like that character. <laughs> they, they he made looks it like up Ray to you. Fiennes. You know, he's very lean and tall. You know. Yeah. Uh, and you know, like it's, it's funny right. when you go in to see when you do something. I did something vocally. This is a great. Uh, uh, um, I did a film called there's a movie called The Ten. And it's by a lot of guys that were in the state, the comedy troupe, the state. Oh, yeah. And uh, so Ken Marino and David Wayne, Ken Marino wrote it. Dude. It's like Thomas Lennon, a lot of people that went on to do Reno 911 and things like that. Geniuses. And, 
And yes, and so Ken wrote it, and David Wayne directed it, and and I the role that it's a, it's a great story, and it's about it's kind of a takeoff on the the was that the Ten Commandments one? Yes, exactly. Yes. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh you've me. seen it. Talk to me. Talk to me. What happened? Well, well, in it, so there's you know this it's the Ten Commandments. It's supposed to be based on the Decameron. Um, I forgot who directed it. Mm -hmm. Kislovsky, one of these, and it's supposed to be based on that film where the 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 original film was kind of like more of a serious take on each commandment and these were obviously parodies right right and um so we the one that i did it was kind of it was uh don't take the lord's name in vain and it starred justin theroux and gretchen mall beautiful and my character was uh I was a narrator. I na it was a takeoff on Itumama Tambien, if you've seen that. Oh my god. Were you the Mexican narrator? I was the Mexican narrator. Yes. Oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. So there's a <laughs> section where he's he's na out of the blue, the narrator starts, you know, and then he starts saying he says, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how clean your <laughs> podcast is. Yeah. Oh, he it's not. Saying, it's not at all. It's not okay. Well, they start, they, you know, they start making love, and then he starts talking about the, the, the you know, the character's vagina yeah. in, in Spanish, and, he's, and he, he really loves the word. So he's like, vagina, vagina, vagina. And it becomes a running joke in the yeah. film. But so when we did it, you know, so I good. was thrilled because I love you to Mama Tambien, and I was really thrilled to be doing the – the the film and and uh i met i met um paul rudd was in it and he also produced it yeah and so when i did looping for it i met paul and, and i went in to meet some of the other cast members and um when they do <laughs> when they if you on the dvd of the 10 when they kind of do behind the scenes work Mm -hmm. They talked. They he meant they mentioned me when oh, it came sweet. my part. They started talking, which was so cool. But then David and Paul were like, "He looks nothing like how he sounds," <laughs> which is just very true. I mean, I, goals, I'm though. Bilbo Baggins, <laughs> and when I say Bilbo Baggins, I'm Ian Holm Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> Not that old, but Before you know, maybe Martin Freeman's face, Ian Holm's body. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works, you know. I mean, yeah, that, was, that's the highest compliment, though, isn't it? You know, an actor that's able to, yeah. it's more than you see. And well, that's, yeah, I don't, that's why I, I, I actually, uh, many times, e even in, like, the conventions, I, I go, oh, man, now they're going to see me. And they're gonna, <laughs> you, know, you should get prosthetics <laughs> yeah. and, like, yeah. boots. Like, Mark, when Mark goes, he grows a beard. You know, he's like, oh, yeah. I'm Obi-Wan, all right? You know, he wants to look like a Jedi. Yep. And there I it. am. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, come on, Mark. <laughs> what yeah. are you doing here? <laughs> I'm an Ewok. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Hello, friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you. I'm with you there. I'm. I'm pretty short compared to my friends. That's another thing. You oh. know, it's like I'm. It's, I think I'm on a good day. I'm like five seven and a half. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm like, hey, that's. When I found out that the national average was like five nine, I was like, "Ugh, okay, that's a, that's all right. I'll just jump. That'll that'll be right. okay." You know, things you learn. But I don't have oh. your 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 massive amounts of voices. You know, so uh, you can compensate if anyone's like, "Hey, what's up, man?" You're like, "Listen, don't talk to me." You have, <laughs> <laughs> you, yes, you have an ace I in the hole. Like the key eye. I you know I do martial arts and I'll do like yeah. It's, you know, it's how how much power you have coming out of you. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Dude, do you do martial arts? I do. What? What do, do you do? Well, right discipline? now I'm studying Ishinru. Oh, sweet. Uh, with, with, my, with my kids. Right my, on. My daughter is, yeah, yeah. That's cool. No joke, yeah. the episode that released before this one's going to was with a guy named Jeff Vita, who's the host of the Kung Fu Drive-In podcast, and we just talked about Kung Fu for like an hour and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm a big fan of the arts. Oh. The martial arts. You do know. do you study also? I so I trained at Shore and Rue for like two or three years. Yeah, sure, and, sure. And then I studied Kendo for like almost ten, because as a kid wow. I was like, I want to be a Jedi. And then I was like, What did they base it on? Kendo. Okay, here we go. And uh, <laughs> it it fed the samurai addiction as well. <laughs> so you know, that's great things you're into. So when you said Kiai, I was like, Oh yes. Like <laughs> I made a joke before that like what's interesting about martial arts is you know you have like lineage. 
this person learned from this person learned from this person. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. yes, I'm a part mm-hmm. of this line of learning. And one, the my sensei's sensei, so my yes. name was Kevin Van Hall. His teacher was Alton Martin. Alton Martin was one of Jason David Frank's senseis. So we're like, if we play this correctly, we could all be Power Rangers. So, so it's just the oh, thing that, like, when you say wow. Kiai, once we learn that, we just did Power Ranger Kiais left and right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to invent It's not it. that intimidating. No, I'm I, <laughs> I, It is if you're a putty. <laughs> that's right. If you're in a rubber suit, that's, that is a fear-inducing cry. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you say you've done over... But how many how many books have you read now on tape? Um, well, 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 Audible has over you know maybe like I don't know over five hundred. But I've done more than that because a lot Sheesh. I've a lot of things are usually sometimes they they don't make it to Audible or sure. they're in or they or they're multicast project projects. Like for instance, uh, the the Dooku one that came out. Oh yeah, I'm a part of that, but I'm not listed. You know, oh, so it's not in the Audible. Well, part. it. Be- it's yeah it's just based on audible they don't they'll they'll say a full cast because they can't put everybody down oh you know, right cause yeah because it's a lot. too much room sure. you know so so you know they'll put like the first three people or something so a lot of times that happens or maybe they're you know they're they're projects that that are um that have been discontinued or something like that sure or projects that i have a pseudonym on for <laughs> because, oh. yeah, which happens you know interesting yeah so uh yeah You're full of secrets yeah. jonathan Davis. so you know it's it's probably closer to um oh i don't know maybe between eight and a thousand in terms of, oh. of books yeah quite quite a bit now by now that's amazing do you have a, yeah. so what are some of your favorite books then because you've read a lot of them uh, well bes- outside of the star wars yeah of course um, sagas which which i do Still, you know, I'm trying to, which was uh, in that world. I do love the Dark Bane trilogy. Oh, I, I love, I love that, gold. and I wish that, I wish that would have continued. You know, I wish, you know, or actually, I, I would hope that they would bring him into the can, into canon. You never know. You don't know. I know. Oh, I know. You never so know. So exciting. You know, I know. You never know. That would be terrific. You know. I know a guy. Real, really excited to. You know, I was very excited to do. Master and Apprentice, because Qui Gon was oh, one of my favorite characters. Dude, Absolutely. you just opened a door. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there in a second. <laughs> uh, but it, out, outside of outside of the Star Wars EU, I would say uh, I love Snow Crash. I would recommend that to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a cyberpunk classic, chock full of crazy characters. It's really great. Uh, and then I uh, I. There's a book called Shadow of the Wind, which I love, which is more of an epic romance, but it takes place in uh, during the Civil War in Spain, and it's oh. this mystery. And it actually, it actually was a trilogy. It had a lot of a lot of uh, interpretations where different actors took over and took it into it kind of like spinoffs, and they took it off and over and went in different directions. Sure. Uh, but I love doing that book. Um, yeah, there's so many. It's hard to say, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've if, read you know, way the, less. I do a lot of different genres. I do nonfiction. I do fiction. So it's you know, it depends. Sure. Know? I also I love Oliver Sacks, the the neurologist or the great late the late great Oliver Sacks, who for those who may not know him, he was um, if anybody saw the movie Awakenings with Robin Williams, yeah, and Robert De Niro, Robin Williams' character was Oliver Sacks. And so Dude. he did. I I was very fortunate to do many of his books um, with his approval. Oh, that's um, cool. It was one of the things that he he I had I had heard they were casting for it, mm-hmm. but he's a lot older than I am, so I think they wanted somebody older at first. But I kept on asking because I knew how. This is one one of the 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 areas where. I actually narrated his book like him with his oh, cool. his tonality because he has a very specific way of speaking. Mm-hmm. And I loved – I used to listen to him all the time. So I was familiar with him and the, he kept on turning people down and saying, I, I don't – I'm not happy with this narration. And luckily they I, – I auditioned and he chose me. So I was very, very happy. That wow. was a great gift. Yeah. Getting picked by the dude to play the dude. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's when you know you done it. Ricky Martin was like, "Okay, cool." And do That's it. right. 
You, you've got a, you should keep a scoreboard now. Like this person said, I can be them now. Check this person <laughs> yes. now. Ha ha. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you have like a like a regiment to prepare for an audiobook, being that it's like a marathon? I, you know, I I used to. I, I'm being straightforward. I, I'm not as much <laughs> anymore because I think my instrument is so used to it. After it's just like muscle memory. That's a good point. That's you know, a good point. You just like we talk about martial arts. You know, when you're doing kata or when you're doing yep. you know whatever whatever it may be, you're you're you kind of know after a while it just happens naturally. Sure. And so what you do is you work to finesse things. Right. You know, that's it's the same. It's the same thing. So in, even in vocally, what I do is I. I'm always trying to work on new techniques to make it smoother and and uh, a more enjoyable process sure. you know, and product. Uh, but no, no, I mean, I don't, I don't go crazy in terms of I, I would recommend to people that are beginning or that are starting out to do that, you know, to, to have a vocal regimen. Sure. Absolutely. So you don't blow your voice out. Do you oh, when absolutely. you're when you're reading it, do you bounce back and forth between all the voices? We do. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, that's 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 how we do it. Wow. <laughs> so you just so you're it's conditioned reflex response, you know. It was like, Pretty oh, much, this, and, this, and, you this. know, it's in your head too. You know, if you're imagining the scene, and but I still like in my head, I'm re, I'm reacting, you know, because I can see the character. You have to give that moment where the character reacts. Right. Right. So it's not always so immediate. You know, it could be like, well, wait a minute, the character is taking a, you know, has that, you know, is facially responding and then then you can bring it up you know just like in in theater sure sure yeah dude so i have to officially thank you for (laughs) lords of the sith because oh boy that's the one like so that's another thing from like i've listened to a lot of non-star wars audiobooks as well yeah and it's like star wars ones even the audiobooks lean more toward like the audio drama type of feel because you got music and sound effects and all these different things absolutely yeah and Lords of the Sith is the one. I think it might have been one of my first Star Wars audiobooks. That might be why it, like, apart from just being awesome, being the first foray into it, I was like, oh, what is this? Oh, um, wow. It's, dude, it's so good. It's so good. So did you start later then? Because yeah. Because that's a, one I, of the newer ones. Yeah, yeah, I've only been listening to audiobooks for maybe like three or four years or so. Wow. Yeah, I'm new into the world, but then I went in because <laughs> I, I work nights, so I've just got time. While I'm working, so I just have this. When do you listen? When do you listen to stuff? I listen uh, while I'm at work. So between, let's say, like midnight to like five ish. So I listen to like Mm -hmm. a ton of podcasts, a ton of uh, audiobooks and whatnot. And that's been what's fun because Master and Apprentice came out, and then Dooku came out, and Mm -hmm. so my backlog of podcasts got super long because I was like, I'm busy. I got to do these two things first. And Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's when I listen. I'm lucky. To where I don't have to like take time out of my day and like section this thing because I work by myself. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'll just listen to all these things then. So. I was always curious, you know, because I, I, I know it began kind of like for commuters. Right. I mean? Exactly. It it's pretty you know. much the same. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Same sort of thing. Man. So, Master and Apprentice, mm-hmm. we got to dive in because <laughs> Qui Gon <laughs> is my dude, man. My, yeah. He's my favorite Star Wars character. I've got. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I don't want to sound crazy, but I got a lot of Qui Gon merch around me right now. <laughs> mm, <laughs> it's, it, really? When you find your thing, you know how <laughs> I, I like. To, so I think we as humans are obsessive. That's why you have like, if you have a favorite sports team, you dress your baby in it. If you, can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, we yeah. just we're very good at like picking one thing and being like, I'm this thing now, and. uh as a kid, I was like, hmm, I'm either going to be obsessed with sports or Star Wars, and Star Wars is slightly cheaper. So I was like, let's do, <laughs> let's do that one. Right. And Qui-Gon from like eight years old, when episode one came out, uh, that's my dude. So when yeah. I listen to things with Qui-Gon in them, one, I'm very excited. Because I'm like, oh man, he's back. Uh, but also, your Qui-Gon is so good, because I well, like what you. you said earlier, when you're like, you go for the subtle sort of thing, like... I can tell in in Master and Apprentice and even in Dooku, because I listen to them back to back, you can tell mm-hmm. Qui-Gon's there. And not even just by like hearing it, but like the tone and the way that you play him. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he, he does have, he's such a, uh, to me, I mean, I'm trying to find the right word for it, you know, just... Um, I don't want to say calm, you know, or but he, there's something about his presence that 
he's just very you know when you talk about the martial arts i mean there's something there's something about him where 100 he's, he's very zen yes you know? <laughs> yeah he's very you know? jedi if you will <laughs> yes he is he's jedi yeah. I agree. I agree. Even very, though he very had nuanced. issues with it. That's what oh, you know, Master man. Apprentice is all about. Dude, Master Apprentice you know? is so good. Yeah. And the back so. and forths and stuff and just, oh, oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're doing But like... I, I'm, I'm so happy that they, they, they chose to do that and the Duke of Story to really develop those characters. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Uh, very, you know, yeah. Same. Yeah. I've been waiting for Dooku stuff forever because I'm like, he trained right. Qui Gon and he was trained by Yoda. Like, let's figure this out, guys. When are we getting these? I remember. Right. I remember. I tweeted about it like two or three years ago, and then when they announced Dooku lost, I was like, they heard me. Look, everyone, <laughs> they're they're listening. <laughs> but so when you're doing like a, an audio drama, how was that process different? You mean the the, the Dooku project versus yeah the, versus like audiobooks? Yeah, in Star Wars. There's still music, and it's almost like an audio drama, but there's a book. Whereas this is like it's got to be more like a cartoon sort of thing with a cast and whatnot in it. Yeah, I I, I think because I was playing Qui Gon in that, you know, it, there wasn't a, I didn't play a character. I didn't, wasn't doing characters that were because I I heard oh. <laughs> it wasn't when I was there, but I heard there was a lot of. Like it was a very kinetic kind of production where where people were like when you're talking about my my yelling or shouting. Yeah, I heard that there was a lot of that in it. Yeah, but it wasn't in the scenes that I was involved in. Right. So uh, you know, I, I it it seemed um, it was just it was just a, a calmer kind of process when I was there. I think the scenes that I was involved in and weren't as uh, dramatic. I would say, sure, sure. Uh, as as some of the others, but but it's but we but but I have done you know doing when we did the Ian Desher sh- uh, projects, um, those were also multicast, oh. so we, it was they were they were done the same way except that uh, Jedi Lost there were a lot more characters and there were about twelve of us I think, right. So at times maybe I wouldn't say all twelve of us, but at least you know at least eight or nine of us were in the booth together you know so that's cool so there was there was a lot going on you know yeah um and yeah you have and because because it i think i think the one thing is that they really wanted it to be natural sure. Jedi i lost so uh, so in terms of uh uh you know they they wanted overlapping like you know right you know overlap the other actor you know and and, uh, you know, j- you know, you can jump on somebody's line. Don't worry about it. We want this to have a natural feel. Sure. So that that that's that's the one thing that was that was kind of like that. And that that, that we do with the multicast, you know. Sure. That's pretty cool. It's got to be uh, it's got to be a, a lot of fun as well with like playing off of someone as opposed to playing off yourself. Or you're probably used to it by now. You do so many things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, they're both fun. You, no, it definitely is. You know, it, it is great to work off somebody else, you know, and um, as I, you know, I've done I've done a bunch of multicasts, not necessarily for for auto, I mean, for um, Star Wars. Sure. But for other companies, for Audible, I was about to say, and for um, and for Penguin Random House. And there was yeah. a, uh, a few other projects I did that were what that were huge multicast projects. Um and uh, with with a really huge cast, you know, so, yeah, that 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 is great. Yeah, of course, it is great to work to work opposite somebody. Sure. You're you know, a and human to work off them. Actual reaction, human Absolutely. connection and whatnot. It's, it's theater in a booth. Yeah. And, and I'd, lo- I'd love to see more of that. And I have a feeling that they want to go that route, you know, with after the Dooku story. I think, you know, they want to try that more often. Yeah, I think so, too. It was, it was pretty feeling. well received. So it's like, hey, yes, there's a and there's I, a want. I think what pe- what people like too is they liked that, um, you know, when when they heard these these standalone stories, not standalone stories, but when there was just one individual narrating it all. Right. Um, I think what they liked is they're like, wow, we really like Mark. We like, you know, January. We like Jeff Gurner. We like Jonathan. Whoever may be doing it, wouldn't it be fun if when are they going to do work together? Right. You know, like, you know, when are they going to do characters that they're really good at and then work well off each other? Yeah. So I think that'll be that'll be fun to really have that, you know, that opportunity in this in this case. There was a lot of new people, too. 
yeah. that they introduced, you know, so new actors that they introduced in different roles. I did you know, notice so that. that. Yeah. yeah. So what is an audition like for an audiobook versus like other voiceover? Hmm. Uh, I think it's more, well, e everything's different, you know, right. I mean, promos it's really about how quick you are and you know mm -hmm. yeah it's how fast you are and it's about selling something it's about merchandise sure you know audiobooks and then documentaries which i do which i love to do mm -hmm. uh too i've done some for national geographic and uh, national geographic channel for nova so um cool. so and th those are fun and i love doing that that that's something i've actually since i was a kid i wanted to do. i used to watch national geographic um, and if you, in the background, the music is like, bum, 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 Yeah. The and the, 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 there used to be a narrator named Richard Kiley, who I used to love as a kid. And I'd watch those shows. And then I booked my first NG documentary, you know, and, you know, and it was like, uh, battle for the elephants, you know, and it, it, oh, and it ended like the, 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 uh, intro was like, Something like, uh, um, uh, we are reaching the days oh. when this may be the battle for the elephants. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And then it had, <laughs> you know, the music. You did and it. And I was watching and I couldn't, I, I, that freak, that was like, I can't believe I, that's me. And then the music that I yeah. loved watching as a kid. You've made it. You know, it's over <laughs> it. But auditioning, so I think the thing with those stories is that it's, it's really, it's storytelling. Right. That's really what you come down to. So audiobooks, it's really about storytelling, you know, and, and you want to the best compliment I ever got, um, which may sound odd, but it was a, it was a great compliment I got from a listener was that they said, you know, when I was listening to it, 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 it I felt like I was sitting around a campfire and like you were the tribal elder yes. who was telling telling everybody the story. And I thought, well, then I succeeded because that's what that's what it is right you know, right you don't it does you don't want it to be stale and you don't want it to be flat sure you, know, you you want it to to you want to engage people right and i think that's what's wonderful about the star wars film books the audiobooks is it really is that and i think they've really aimed to find actors that can that can provide that that can pull people in and then plus with John Williams music and with all the start, the sound effects, you know, yeah. and particularly now doing this multicast thing with different people working off each other. It's, it's becoming quite successful. Yeah. And rightfully so. Rightfully yeah. so. I, I it's kind of neat. Cause I feel like narration is like a specific skill because it's like, you have to narrate and like keep the vehicle moving and kind of drive it with your voice. But at the same time, you kind of have to like get out of the way of the thing as well. Right. It's like right. a, it's got to be a weird line to kind of find. We are like, I'm driving the boat, but also I don't need you to know I'm driving the boat. You just need to know the boat's moving. And you're like, oh, yeah. it's pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty neat. A lot of things yeah, you, wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't think about, like a specific skill of the voice. Do you have a voice you like to do? Where you're like, I, I just, this one's fun. Like, I like to do a this voice? Kind of like a, a character like voice? A, or like a or character or... voice or like an accent? Like, everyone has like, a fun one that they like to do. Oh, I like to do a Russian <laughs> accent. Don't tell me you don't. Oh, I know I you see, do. I see. <laughs> well, no, no. I, you know, you're you're right. You're right. Right. You know, I think I think what I like to do is something that I that I feel is organic. Sure. To sure. me, so I don't want to put on stuff something. So if I'm doing a language that I don't really know, I don't want to imitate somebody in in that sense. You know, I have to. I want to find ways of making it realistic. Ooh, good you know, point. If, if I'm doing some, if I'm doing some eth ethnic voice, that's just you know I don't want to go too far out there. I I want to try to find something that it, that really pertains to why somebody may speak a certain way. Sure, um, make a character. And so, but of so I try to stick to stuff. So, so if if anything is is Latino because I do speak Spanish, right? Fluently, I I like to do that. I do like and if and if it's if it's if I'm doing. You know, I know I know the idiosyncrasies or the subtleties between different Latin uh, Spanish accents. So oh, if yeah. somebody from Puerto Rico or Cuba or Mexico, they're all going to speak slightly differently. So it is fun to do that. I also, and I, it depends. I speak a few languages, which has helped me in voiceover, too. Sure. So that that the Max Payne thing took place in Brazil, which so I I'm actually doing a project right now of 
in in my booth i have a home studio oh sweet so i work from home also love it um and uh, so i'm doing something and it's a brazilian story what? so do you have to speak you know, portuguese use an accent uh, it's portuguese no what? it's there there is some portuguese in it but i i it's it's mainly in english but whenever the portuguese comes up i'm able to do it what? you know so so what languages do yeah. you speak i speak uh, spanish i speak portuguese I speak some Hebrew. Oh, I lived what? out in that area for about a year and a half. I lived in a kibbutz, if you know what, what? those things are. <laughs> kibbutz. I was a kibbutznik, so I speak some Hebrew. That's so, so I'm cool. familiar. I'm, I studied Russian, so I can actually do a Russian accent. Oh, because sweet. Because you know the language. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not fluent, but I, sure. can, I can pull it off. You know, so there's some... Uh, there's some Italians in my family, you know, so there's there's different different things that I can do that where I feel comfortable because it's it's who I am. Right. Right. You know, where when somebody says, can you do German? You know, I go, well, <laughs> you know, I'm not or or, you know, you know, I, I, I don't really like doing unless it's a character. You sure. know, like if I'm imitating somebody, I'm listening to them. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're talking about Liam Neeson or. If yeah. Or somebody or. You and McGregor, somebody like that, I can listen to them and and really uh, do my best to nail them. Mm -hmm. But the, how they speak, but it, but if it's if they're gonna if they want like if we're doing uh, uh, I can't even say Game of Thrones now because that's so <laughs> popular and there's I could imitate those characters. But let's say you know I, I, if it was a book that took place in Yorkshire, you right? Know, if it was a British book. Don't hire me. I hire a Brit. <laughs> yeah. There's you know, so I don't many. Like that. Like, yeah, exactly. But actually, I get ticked off, you know, like in film, so many Brits and Australians are always playing Americans. Yeah, it's true. And I'm like, excuse me, dude. <laughs> yeah. What's wait that a about? second. <laughs> yeah. You can't be better at us than everything. <laughs> yeah, wait yeah, a second. Yeah, I'm trying to think of somebody right now, but. Yeah, or like the guy on The Walking Dead. I was he, just about to say Andrew you know, Lincoln. <laughs> Andrew Lincoln. I mean, he's great, but did it have to be Andrew Lincoln? It's true. He just came in. They're like the way he yeah, says Carl. I, mean, I love Andrew just Lincoln, but why Andrew Lincoln? <laughs> because of Carl, Jonathan. That's why. <laughs> yes. The way yes, that he yeah. says Carl, they were like, "Okay, <laughs> that's you're right. No one in the world." Or preacher, you know, the the lead in preacher. You're right. Uh, yeah. Dominic, I forget. Dominic was... Cooper. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. You Save know, some for you, the rest you, of us. Are you telling me Woody Harrelson or McConaughey wasn't available? Or oh, dude, I love whoever it is. You know. That's fine. And, and I love it when they get it right. You know, there's a lot of times when uh, I'm, I am I used to watch True Blood in the beginning. Oh, and one same. of the actors on that, Jason, I forget, or is that yes, the character? The, yeah, Jason, the, the younger brother. His name is. The um, younger brother. He's Australian. I, I, he right? He fooled me. Same, same. Dude, Hugh Laurie. You ever heard Hugh Laurie talk? Hugh Laurie, sure. Oh, the, you hear yeah. him in house and then you hear him talk. You're like, whoa, hold on. That's the Damien guy. Lewis. Yes. Damien, yep. He's brilliant. He, so he's brilliant good. that way. He 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 sounds like an American. He's so good at being an American. So it, it's terrific. But I just, you know, you you don't see the opposite as much. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you know, I, I have a theory that it's because of drama school, because we don't really have anything here that's like that. Whereas, like in London, you've got like as a kid, they'll put you in drama school. It's really cool. You grow up, and then you're like classically trained by fifteen. Whereas here, we've got mm -hmm. like you know Juilliard and stuff like that. But it's not a common thing like it is over there but then again america's so big it's huge it's huge you can fit like half yes. of europe in texas which right, make, which right. makes accents fun accents are fun in general like the when you talk about like yorkshire versus like a cockney accent versus like a right. straight london accent it's like within right. 50 miles you've got all these different accents it's pretty neat well <laughs> even here you know like you were talking about what i do like i i'll tell you what i don't like to do <laughs> Yeah, let's There's do it. There's <laughs> some accents I don't like to do, you know, and I avoid because I, I know I'm going to get creamed. <laughs> you know, if I do it, they're going to go, man, that that stunk. Yeah, you know, you're like, like, what is that supposed to be? <laughs> well, like Boston. I, you know, I don't want to do the stereotype Boston accent. Boston's you know, they hard. get all these act. So, I, so many people just seem so inauthentic. Sure, you know? sure. You know, unless they're Mark Wahlberg. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't buy anybody else, you know. Yeah, fair. Uh, I mean, he can only do a Boston accent, to be fair. So, <laughs> well, well, true, true. But, but, but I respect that. You know, I Same. respect the actors that go, this is what I do. Yep. And yep. I'm not going to make believe. I remember, I think it was Tom Cruise did Valkyrie. Oh, yes. And he like immediately turned it into, he, yep, it was like he a quit. German, <laughs> you know, like it was like he had one German accent and they flipped it. You know, yep. so the whole movie was going to be in English. <laughs> I actually appreciated that. I said, good for him. Same, you know? <laughs> same. You know where you're at, man. I, yeah, well done. You, 
you know your limitations and you know what you're good at. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You hired Tom Cruise, not a Nazi. Yeah, right. So, you, know, <laughs> you gotta work yeah. with what you got. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, I was th- yeah. I always thought the Boston accent kinda sounds like an Australian accent in certain ways. Like if you're gonna say park the car as an Australian and as yeah. a Boston person, it's pretty similar. That's yes, I see what you're saying. You know? I see where you're going. Coming from that. a guy. I'm not gonna try either. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had to explain. I don't do accents. Yeah. I'm terrible at them, you know. So that's why people like you are in the world, because somebody has to do it. <laughs> You know, but so what so what kind of advice would you have for somebody who like wants to get into voiceover work? Because it's, it's uh, pretty big now. voiceover work in general. Sure. You know, I think, well, um, they're, they're, you know, each medium is so different. So I think True. the main thing is to is to discover what direction you want to go in. You know, do you want to be a storyteller? Do you want to be a commercial guy? Do you want to be a promo person? Sure. Do you, you know, what do you want to do animation, you know, and you have to find out, well, where are the markets for that and where do I go? Sure. And but I think I think mainly and this is what is to know your own voice, you know. Good point. Uh, uh, you know, listen, there are plenty of people that go out there and try to emulate somebody else. Right. And they do it very well. So I but that's just not my style. My my thing is just know how your own voices sound, you know, who, who you are and what you do. And go for it and just be the best at who you are, you know, your own style, you know, and you'll, you'll find work that way. You definitely will. And don't try to be something you're not. That's what I'm saying. Like the people that go out there and suddenly they start doing British accents when the reality is most producers are going to hire somebody who's British. Sure. You know, so easier. Just be who you are. You know, if you have an everyman style, I was coaching somebody who was from Juilliard and he he read the script great and he's he's actually quite successful now really great guy and he's quite successful but when he started out he read the script like a juilliard student would oh and the character came from a town which was very iconic and it was very midwestern but he sounded but he did have kind of a juilliard affect to oh. it when he when he did it and i said man this is you you're from the same town this character is you know, so yeah, so just do it. And then he linked. changed and it changed his and that's he excels because he's very good. at He's a great actor, but he was he was natural. It was organic. It was who he was. Sure. That makes total sense. Yeah. Because then that comes from an even more natural place because you're not trying to fit a square peg into a circle hole. You're like, exactly. oh, I, I have this in me and then you can bring it out. That's a, That's pretty good. It's like right. you've done this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just a couple. Well, you know, it's, you know, there's like, or oh, the person that goes in, you know, and, and wants to sound like that, does that kind of, you know, sound. Listen, oh, yeah. if that's how you sound, if that's your natural sound, it's true. Fantastic. Otherwise, you know, mm-hmm. and if you can emulate that, more power to you. But you know, I, you know, try to do what you what you're good at. Right. You know? Right. See, you know? see what kind of instrument you're playing. You don't want to play violin right. parts on a trombone. It's just not exactly, really and, you, work. and you know everybody has their style and finds their way with whatever instrument they have. It's true. You know they find their iconic sound. I agree. I agree. You know, so, so you gotta you gotta have a reel or something, right? Like how does with voice reels? Because that's a, that's another thing I've learned. Like with reels and whatnot, it's like there's a million right ways to do something. So you gotta, right. like you said, kind of find your way. But like, so somebody who wants to do this like voiceover stuff, what what advice do you have for like putting together a reel? Like keep it short. That's okay. That's what I've heard. Like, a, is a minute too long? I feel like no, a minute, a minute, minute, minute and a half, maybe even two. But you don't want to go more than two minutes. Yeah, because cause nobody's gonna. They listen hear to you, and they, they. I tell you, within like seven seconds or less, they'll they'll know. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, unless they want to hear a variation of some kind. You know. Right. Um, right. Is that what but you? This is it. You know, I'm, I had an agent, and I, when I was first starting out, my agent was like, um, you know, the casting directors they really like you, but. They call you Sybil Uh-oh. because they don't <laughs> – you do so many different things and you're good at different things, but they don't know where to peg. They don't know what to call you in for. Oh, you know, And right. so that's why it's good to kind of say, well, what am I best at? Who am I organically and what can I really do And try, instead of trying to be everything? Sure, sure. You know, so, so I think that's the same thing. However, within that vocal style, you can show different cadences. You can show – you can do a vocal style where – if you're going to be what they call 
Broken Voice, which are the guys that are on like coming up next on HBO. They call right. that bro- Broken <laughs> Voice because they all sound like they just were screaming the night before. <laughs> yeah, you know. So those guys, even with that, you know, it, they can they they do a, they do something with a smile, or they do something that's that's kind of deadpan, deadpan humor, or they do something serious, right? Or they do something that maybe uh, you know a moving segment, you know, or something. So th- th- that's what you want to do. Focus on embrace who you are. But yeah, keep it short and be as professional as you can be. Sure. If that, that's, that's, that's very vague. That no, I mean that's great <laughs> advice too. One of those things you said that's a hard lesson I learned because uh, I've I've been I've been an actor for like four years now or something actively trying to do it. Oh, that's and, what, great. That's great. I, stop it. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been like recutting my reel a lot lately. Like I haven't done voice work because I haven't. Is weird, it is this voice uh, like on camera? Yeah, yeah, on camera stuff. Oh wow! And so I'm trying to be at Star Wars, Jonathan. Uh, and so, so great. I, I've got this reel that I've been recutting for a while now. And at first, your 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 impulse is to like here's a variety of all the different things I've done. Yeah. So you can yeah, be like, yeah. I can do this. I can do this. I can do drama and comedy. But like you said, that like I said, this is a lesson I just learned. So you just high octane pinged. I was like, it's right. Is <laughs> the when you show such a variety, then they're like, we need a funny guy, and you're showing me you can do funny, sad, mad, glad, all these things. It's like, but we need funny. So it's like, the the more precise you can be, it seems like that's a better way to go because it's a business. You got to sell yourself for the yes. role. And yeah. if they're like, we need a funny guy. Well, here's a bunch of funny things. Oh, okay, okay. But if you've got like a scene where you're just breaking down crying, you're like, ugh, we're kind of looking for something a little lighter. You're like, no, but I can do all of it. So Yeah, well, that, yeah, exactly. It's the whole thing like in Tootsie, you know, where he goes, yes. I can be shorter, I can be taller. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Want someone else. You know, yep. you know, that's what it comes down to. Yep. So I think I think that's great advice. They're like, find, because your voice is your voice. You can do a ton of things, but you've also, everyone's got range. You can't go outside of your range without – your voice does what it does. So you can't be like, I'm all of a sudden going to be this super deep baritone and be believable with it. It's like, no, we can tell you're kind of stretching your throat a little bit. And I'll be like, yeah, you're right. And professionals right. know what they're listening for. They listen to voices all day long, so you're not going to fool them. So, yeah, I think, right. that's, I think that's a – I think that's great advice. And, you know, and people, you know, as you age, you know, you can reinvent yourself. You definitely True. Can do that. You can do it anyway. Like even in, in the stuff that I do is the fact that it's to branch out to different genres, also to branch out to different mediums. I've been cast in doing narration. I, I love documentaries. But mm-hmm. I said, how would you find me? And they go, we were on Audible and we heard your voice. Ooh. And it's a different medium. So I think there's a lot of there's a lot of space for crossover. I agree. When you're in VO. Where you can do, I know some people that do audiobooks, but they also do um, animation. Sure, you know quite a few. Some of them, some of them, uh, a great, great audio guy named uh, audiobook narrator named Dion Graham mm-hmm. does a lot of film too. But he also does uh, document. He does. He has a series that he that he. I think it's the uh, the next forty eight something like that. Oh yeah, it's a crime a crime show. So yeah, he does yeah. that. But there's a lot of audiobooks. Really? And there's some celebrities, you know, celebrities now are starting to I'm, I'm talking about, you know, there actually there are some A-list celebrities that really love doing audiobooks. Yeah, I was uh, very fortunate. I was in uh, in honored to be inducted in the Audible Hall of Fame. Yeah, you a couple were of years ago. And but there's some one, you know, Alan Cumming was, too. Yeah. And Ed, Ed Herman, Edward Herman Damn. and uh, Jim Dale. You know, but Jim Dale, my God, you know, before doing Harry Potter and all those audiobooks, I mean, the people know him for. Yeah. He's a composer and an actor. And, you know, he wrote Georgie Girl. And, you know, he's just a famous, iconic man. But he did. So, you know, there are people that you, you can. I, I guess what I'm saying is a lot of people are finding th- they're crossing over from what they're doing because they really like audiobooks. There's some guys that I always see that do a lot now. Who are like, I'm wondering, like, well, they don't need to be doing this, but they do it because they love it. Like Will Patton and Will Wheaton. Right. And Richard Armitage from Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. Uh, Speaking he does of a course. ton of audiobooks. Yeah. You know? I mean, these these guys, why do they do it? Because they love it. Because it's fun. They love it. Not everybody does. There's some some other film actors that come in and, you know, it's too tough. Yeah, because I, I it's bet. it's a marathon and they can't do it, you know, and you'd be surprised, you know, people that are really great film actors and, you know, theater actors, too. But, you know, them from film and they come in and they're not that good. 
You sure. Know, they, they're not going to because it's a different medium. One hundred percent. Yeah. But anyway, that's yeah. I mean, it's just great to to. I guess in the end, embrace who you are and always try to evolve. And what I was going to talk about reinventing is like on, on camera, doing on camera, like uh, Michael Chiklis, who I admired. Oh, greatly, yeah. Who was the commish. And then suddenly he transformed himself. He didn't want to be that anymore. And he became Vic Mackey on The Shield. And it's a completely different character. But it's mm-hmm. him. You're it's right. still him. It's organically him. He just he changed himself. In right. A way, right. You know. Or you'll see actors from the Brat Pack days yeah. who now they're they're in their 50s and they have to reinvent themselves. And they do. It's true. You know? It's true. Yeah, so as long as you cool. can like keep rolling with the ball because it's going to keep going. And like the, that's another thing with like acting as well is like as you get older, you get different roles. You're not going to play the dad at 22, you know, that's but right. when, you, when you get older, they're like, oh, I have this new like I remember there was this one podcast I was listening to where they it was with Tom Hiddleston. And he was yeah, yeah. he was joking about how he was the wrong age for Harry Potter because he was too old to be a student but too young to be a teacher when oh, they were happening. Wow! And it kind of made me laugh because I'm like, oh, you're right. Age is very much a part of what what you have access to, and it's more believable when you've got that prerequisite where like you can, you have this in you already. Sometimes it's just age, and then with the skill on top of it, you can you have that option to reinvent yourself over and over yeah. again. And yeah. people are complicated, so you got a lot in you, you know. Yeah. But the yeah. fact that you're playing dark side characters, we might need to talk about. You know. Oh if sure. It, <laughs> if it's inside of you, and they keep calling you for it, and you've played villains, what's going on, Jonathan? Well, villains are fun. <laughs> Come on. You're like, I don't call them villains. Villains are great. Who wants to play heroes? <laughs> it's true. That's what I've I mean, heard a I mean, lot. I mean, no, some <laughs> heroes are are a damn lot of fun. But you know, I think the the because these days. Most heroes are anti-heroes. It's true. So that's a little different. I agree. You know, I mean, there's a gray area. Do you see the door opening for you? <laughs> you're like, I've to been be a an villain. anti-hero? Yeah, you're like, I've been a villain for so long, but the waters are getting muddied. Sure, <laughs> sure. Well, listen, whenever I, whenever I, but like when I played Bane or when I was doing that book, I mean, yeah. the fact is in many ways, you you know, whoever you're doing, m- most most characters, the interesting villains or in quote, quote, in quote villains yeah. are the ones that are gray you know that are doing it for specific that they don't they don't see themselves as villains specific, specifically it's true it's true you know they see themselves as advancing something right right or you know in, in a way. yeah they're, they're, yeah, not, they're well, not twirling their mustache over breakfast no no i mean that's what uh, so it makes kylo ren so fascinating agreed you know now if we're looking at him specific you know i'm thinking of others you know or, or vader you know yeah. obviously you're right. You know, so Anakin Vader. So you know, yeah. I mean, you know that. You, I th- I think I think in many ways villains tend to be more interesting. Well, you as know, more Jedi Brian, I can't yeah. agree with you. So. Oh, you, oh. <laughs> I'm just saying I got to stick to my guns here. You know, <laughs> I have a reputation to uphold. Even... Okay. <laughs> Dude, that's so. Yeah. Funny. Can you believe we've been talking for over an hour? No, I, I I don't even have a clock near me, so I Boom. have no idea. Try an hour and 20 minutes. Ho, ho. Oh Dude, this was really fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, before I forget, where can people find you online? Uh, oh, hey, well, Jonathan, you're awesome. Well, I, I'm I'm actually recreating my website, so I don't have it. It's not active right perhaps? now. But I do. Yeah, <laughs> reinvent. Exactly. I got to get new, new shots, you know, and everything. But, but uh, really... Um, uh, I don't do Twitter right now, so I'm I'm really the one place would be through Facebook. You can you yeah. know you can get Jonathan Davis narrator. Love it, and uh, it's on there. And I usually keep updates of the kind of work that I'm doing. And soon soon I'll have other I'll have the website up, so I can I can direct people there. there but that's go. where I can be found right now. You know, Sweet. on Jonathan Davis narrator. Yeah, you are. Check out Master and Apprentice and Dooku Lost. And the other 1,000 things you've done. <laughs> That's such a high number. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, for real. Dude, thanks for coming on. This was so much fun. I hope Thank you had a you good so time. Thank you so much, Brian. It's been a great time. Right on. And...
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites, as well as BrianBalance.com. That is balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. That's right. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, and Victor. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.